Welcome back to Learn VC. We're here talking about why Business Central. Um, before I get started, please like the video, subscribe to our channel, share some love, share it around to your friends. If you think this is insightful, would love your support to just turn around and grow our channel. So today we're talking about Shopify. That's right, Business Central and its integration into Shopify. So if you've got a Shopify store, this video is for you. Let's get started. So for those who don't know, Microsoft Dynamics Business Central is an accounting system. It's effectively above the tier of your zeros, your um, QuickBooks, your MyObs um, accounting systems. It actually steps up into the SAP and the Vision um, is, is originally its name. Uh, born out uh, early 1983 or something, and then Microsoft acquired it and made it famous in early 2000s. And since then, they've invested billions and billions of dollars into growing this product. This is what they got rid of all of their accounting systems and chose one of two, being finance and operations or BC. This is the small business tool of choice and it wins the awards. It has the biggest investment and um, it's got the highest rate of innovation. So you can get to uh, look about this by just Googling Business Central or go to dynamics.microsoft.com and you'll be able to end up here by just looking at the products and small to medium business, business central. All right. So we have our demo company. This is what we used in our prior videos in the series. We, we spun this up. We spun it up in a couple of minutes. Okay. Now we're going to show you within 10 minutes how to have a Shopify store online. Okay. Which is really, really cool. In my last video, we actually went in and created some items with some Copilot text. Here, just for a refresher, I've got an Athens mobile pedestal, and I've got a picture, some attributes, some descriptions, and I'm going to use Copilot to create my marketing text for Shopify. We're going to use three products in here from this demo database. Oh, I don't like that tone, so I'm going to make it more casual with a elegance about it regenerate and it's going to give me some new text so this is just getting set up some prerequisites the other thing i'll say is make sure you're logged into shopify in your browser add a touch of timeless elegance okay we're going to save that just remember that for when we sync this okay i'm logged in as an admin to shopify i'm logged in as an admin to bc we should be able to do this now straight out of the box let's go in shops we're going to create a new shop and I'm going to call this online. The next thing you need to have is your Shopify URL. You can't use the store web DNS address. You actually need to use the Shopify ID. We're going to hit enable and this is going to kickstart the authentication. I'm going to hit accept. There's a pop-up window going to appear and here is the app to install to my Shopify, Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. I hit install. There we go. And we're up and running. So we're going to go through some basic config here, which is your locations and your shipment methods. Let's go do that. Get my locations. And it's going to be my main location. It's my default. And I want projected available balance at today to be the balance it shows on the site. I'm going to go back into shipment method mapping and here it's pulled in the methods and I'm going to make these all delivery. Okay. Just for the purpose of today, this could say Australia post, this could say uh, toll and I can change that to Australia post and toll within the mapping of business central, which is pretty cool. All right, let's now configure how it's going to behave with all these options. I'm going to try and make it quick, but you can check out the, uh, I'll include in this the, the help files on Business Central setup from Microsoft in the notes of the video down below. All right, we're synchronizing items to Shopify from BC. We auto create unknown items. Shopify can create, can update or BC can update Shopify. You can only do one or the other, okay? So we're gonna update Shopify. If we were getting items from Shopify, we would use this template. We're going to synchronize images to Shopify. 
include extended text, marketing, and attributes. And I'm going to allow item number plus variant code if it exists. So that's my item. My pricing, I have to have a price list. I have to have a discount group. I'm going to go down further. With my customer synchronization, I synchronize with order import. We map them by phone and email. Create an unknown customers using this default template. I'm not going to use a default number because this switch uh, is creating unknown. All right. So it's either I always use one POS cash customer or I allow for different accounts. Shopify can update BC or BC can up update Shopify. So it's the same as the items. I would prefer that the customer can update their account and then it will synchronize through. This is how we do some tracing. We go down to auto synchronization, auto sync orders. We're going to do freight. And I don't have an account for sold gift cards or tips, but I'm going to just use the same GL code for this example. And the reason being um, why this is here is you can actually hook up Shopify point of sale. You can synchronize that through uh, Shopify through to Business Central for transactions. Shopify order number in the description. Uh, I'm not going to auto create anything. And taxes depends on where you are, whether this is super important to you. For the US, it's huge because of your federal, state, region, and city, providence, etc. For us in Australia, I'm just going to use ship to, sell to, build to, and leave the rest of my settings as they are. Now, in principle, we're ready to go. So, Let's go in related and let's go add a product. Now I've got a few products that I've got their ID of. If I hit add items and I don't put an item number in here, it's going to search every item. So it's going to add every item and I'm going to sync inventory and images and I just hit okay. Gone. So let's now go the next item. Add item. So I'm going to do three items just for our store demo for today. Parascus chair. And I'm going to do one more item. Okay. And so down below, if you've got variants, this gives you the capacity to turn around and handle your variant mapping. So against the product item, if you did have variants, it'll allow you to then map 15 variants back to this one particular item and its associated variants, or you're using the separate items, etc., which is pretty cool. All right. So Business Central Shopify is in principle up and running. If I go in, I can see products. I've got products with images already out of the box. Catalog, right? We're seven minutes into the video. How cool is that? The marketing text has come through. The attributes are automatically inserted into the text. Okay. Now, what are some of the gotchas? There's our pedestal. Some of the gotchas, Business Central doesn't have multiple images per product. So a lot of my customers will load their images in through a product information manager of PIM, or they will load and use Shopify as the source of truth for the product. They'll make it all look pretty. And then they synchronize that product data back into Business Central, okay? And it only brings in one image with it back into BC because that's all BC is designed for at this stage. And Microsoft is dealing with that. Okay, that's something that they've got on their roadmap for the future. The second thing, I guess, is um, that the marketing text is assumed that it's going to put your um, your marketing text and your attributes in. That comes down to your developer of how you want to actually lay out your template and what you're putting on which particular pages. So really, that's that's as as simple as it is. I've got pricing on here. I've got orders, so I've, I've got the ability to order. I'm going to go in and say, add to cart. Great. I'm going to go continue shopping, catalog, and I want one of these. Add to cart, and we're going to check out. So I've ordered two items on the order. I'm going to put my number in. There's my address, save the information for next time. I'm going to use standard freight. Uh, let's do express and I'm going to do bank deposit. Okay. Just like that. And complete order. 
All right, now we've got a Shopify standard receipt out of the box. It sent me an SMS to my phone with the receipt because I used the mobile number. I have um, back in Shopify. If I refresh my screen here, you're going to see an open order here. It's already showing you you've got one. F5. There we go. I'm going to click on it. And you can see that we're pending fulfillment and we're pending payment. So if I go back into Business Central, I click on Shopify and orders. That order is already here, ready to go. If we click into it, it's going to show me the header details that I would need to know. I can see here the lines. I can see payments. I can see the, the, the details here. And the first thing that I want to do is validate payment. I don't want to release an order when I haven't been paid. So I'm going to mark as paid. Now back in Shopify, if I refresh that, it's now paid. So straight away, that was pretty quick. We can create the sales document, but before I do, you've got risks that you can use. You can check, you can see fraud alerts. You've got transactions, which is to do with the reconciliation of the finances, the shipping costs, fulfillments, and related documents, okay? And I'm gonna go create sales document. Now, because I've said automatically create the customer, it's already created the customer, and I create the order. So the order now exists. You'll see one order over here. I can go order, sales order, and here we are. We're in a sales order ready to go. Okay. So the sales order, I might want to go 1010 as the document number. I may want to check the, the, the shipping details, and I may say, hey, no, um, before I send this to the warehouse, I'm wanting to use uh, DHL. And um, we might use them, and I'll use a standard freight for this order. Um, depending on what freight system you use, it will automatically put back in here the tracking number, but just remember this number for later, okay? And what we would want to do is we'd want to release this document so it's done. Would create a warehouse shipment, and your warehouse would have, uh, if you're using picks, you can go a layer further and then print a pick. The pick gets completed, and the shipment relates to your con note from your freight vendor, okay, which would be DHL in this instance. All right, so I've confirmed here I might only ship one of the items or both. The quantity to ship is one each. I'm happy with it. I'm ready to post the shipment. As soon as we do this, we go ship an invoice. We're done and the shipment has gone. So that's great. And it's invoiced, it's sitting there in our system as an invoice. Um, and as far as we're concerned, we can we can see this document gone, off it goes. All right, um, a little bit, uh, a, a few little things in this, the Shopify order still is sitting in a state of uh, unfulfilled. And the reason for that is the synchronization needs to be run to actually update the fulfillment. So see how it's unfulfilled. So you may not want to notify your customers to the end of the day that um, uh, effectively that you've completed your fulfillment, okay? So I may go back to my store and I'll go uh, sync shipments. And I can automate this to happen at 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. every day and everyone gets their shipment details. You might want to wait till Australia Post or DHL come and pick up that shipment as soon as i hit that okay that's done the order is now fully fulfilled i didn't even have to update the screen that customer has now received a tracking number okay and that tracking number would use dhl's tracking details just there like that how cool is that so that's business central the setup took less than 10 minutes it took us another maybe five minutes mucking about with an order but like within 15 minutes, man, that's really, really cool. What a cool setup that you've got there with Microsoft. And that allows us to have multiple locations. I can have multiple warehouses. I can have multi-store. I can have one Shopify store with multiple locations. I can have multiple stores against multiple locations. Um, you can do basic, advanced, and super advanced inventory that rivals the top of the industry. Okay, we've got big warehouses the size of Bunnings Warehouse that use Business Central for managing all of their inventory. So this platform is jam-packed. Shopify to Business Central. Thanks for watching. See you next time.